Hello and welcome along to creating a one-page website in Adobe Muse with your host Robert Smith. In this part two we're going to add some content to our pages. So I'm going to assume for example that maybe down the track we might want to add some more pages to this one site website so I'm going to apply my what's called the header to my master page and if we apply things to master pages of course it will apply to any other page we've got here. Okay, so I'm going to double click on my masters page. First of all, I'll make sure I'm in plan view up here. And I've got the desktop version selected up there. And I'll double click on the master page like that, and Apple minus to zoom out a little bit. And when we look at the master page, or any page, this master page is a little bit special in that it's got this thing called the header. And what this allows you to do, it allows you to add some space to the top of the page. For example, if I was to drag this top blue thing down, you'll notice I get this white area here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see that a bit better. You get this white area here at the top, and that's going to be the space before the page starts. But we don't want that. We want it to start right from the top. So we'll leave that there. And this header area here, we'll just drag it down to here. We don't really know how deep that's going to be yet. Okay, so let's get to placing some images. I'll show you a couple of ways of doing it. Now, the first and most obvious way to get an image into um, Muse is to file, place like this. Exactly the same as uh, InDesign. And in our images folder, I've got a file called header.jpg. Now, the files uh, types you use on the web are jpegs, .gif, and .png if you want transparency. In this case, we've got a JPEG, so I'm going to go open. And now I get a loaded cursor, just like this. If I click on it, like that, it places it, and I can move it around to wherever I want it to be, like this. Now, I've got an issue with this, because I want my this header image to take up the 100% width of the whole browser, depending on what device it's on, on the phone, or on a tablet, or a desktop. I want it to be 100%. Now, I can't do it if I place an image like that it'll always just stay this size or if I even if I enlarge it it's still not going to do what I want it to do so I'll just delete that and do it again but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle and we're going to use what's called the background property if I just drag a, a rectangle out like that and this time when I um, go to fill it up here I'm going to click on the word fill not on the actual square like that if I click on fill and click add image and I'll find my header image and open like this now I've got some options here I could tile it so it would um, repeat over and over again the one I'm going to use is scale to fill like this and that will fill up that rectangle and as you can see it's taken up the whole area of the rectangle and now, if I want that to be 100% of any device, I go up here under Transform, like that. And you'll see I've got this little, um, this is called the 100% Width um, icon here. If I click on that, you'll notice now that my um, image is 100% of the uh, browser width, which is great. We love that. Okay, so I'm going to now just move that up to the top, like that. Now I'm going to place another um, asset, so I'm going to file place again, or command D will do the same thing. This time I'm going to, in my assets, I'm going to place a edge animate animation that I've created earlier. I'm going to click open like this. Again I get the loaded cursor. And when I click I see it's huge. Now this has been designed for a high display retina um, Apple iPhone 6. So it's really huge, but so I'm going to have to reduce the size of it. I'm going to drag it down like this, as I would on any um, application, by dragging the corner and holding the shift key down. We've got great smart guys. I'll put it right in the center for you, just by dragging it left and right till that red um, line comes up. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's have a look what we've done. Now, I could go to my preview mode up here, click on preview, uh, but I, I don't really trust the preview mode so much in Muse, so I'm going to actually preview it in a browser. To do that, I go to File, and I'm going to go to Preview Page in Browser like that. That's one way of doing it. I like to do it the classy way. Shift-Command-E is the shortcut for the same thing. And there it is. There's our 
website looking good inside Chrome. Our Edge Animate animation working and our image taking up 100% of the area. Now this is a bit large because I'm working on a very low resolution screen to capture this. So, okay, that's great. Fantastic. Now what I want to do, I want to add a menu. And again, I'm on my master page. I'm going to, first of all, just draw out a background for my menu by just dragging out a rectangle like this. Now, under the fill, this time I'm going to click on the color swatch and go to this color here. Great, that's what I want. And I'm also going to go to transform and make it 100%. So it's going to be 100% of any um, device that it's viewed on. Fantastic. Okay, now what I'd like to do is add a menu. Yeah, menus come in two types. We get a horizontal and a vertical menu, and they live in this thing called the widgets library. If I click on widgets library like that, under menus, I've got horizontal and vertical. So I'm going to grab the horizontal menu and drag it out like this. And the minute you drag one of these widgets out, you get this these options on the right hand side here. Now. I want to actually make this a manual menu. If we have a multi-page document, you can have an automatic menu where Muse will work out the pages for you. But this we're going to add manual pages or manual what's called anchors later on. Okay, so change that to manual like that. And then I might just zoom in a bit and have a look at that a bit closer. Like this. Okay, now when you select things in Muse, it's a little bit strange compared to most other applications. For example, when I select that, it'll select the whole item and I can drag it around and do what I like with it. If I click it again, like this, it now gives me options. Now the options I want are to create an, a new, um, another menu item if you like. If I click on it twice, you'll see you get this little plus sign here. So if I click on plus, you'll see I get a, a new like that. Now I want five of these, so I'm going to click plus again, select this one, click plus again, select this one, and click plus again. Now I want to click off it, off the menu, and click on it again. Now you notice how I've selected the whole lot, and now I can grab and drag it out like this to make it whatever I like. So I'm going to go in here and change the names of these things. So the first thing I'm going to do is select it once, then click on this one item, and then I'm going to go to my text tool, double click on it, to select that and I'm going to type in about like that and the next one we're going to call digital for displaying digital work like that and the next one we're going to just call this one typography like that and the next one we're going to call branding Like this and this next one here we're going to call this one um, contact so as you can see I've got a five um, item menus so also five menu items I'm going to grab this and the whole thing and just select it and drag it up here where I want it to be Okay, now if I Apple minus to zoom back out again. Now that's not the color I want. I want that I want different fonts and different colors. But first of all, I'll just put that into position here, maybe zoom it out a little by just dragging that to the right. Make it a little bit wider. Okay, now we've got our menu, we've got our edge animate. In the next video, we're going to style this menu. Um, and we're going to look at changing the fonts. Okay, thanks for watching.